Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Thursday's Make It Happen um, for Future Female Founders. Um, and today's session, the insight from a female entrepreneur, we are joined by the lovely Leanne, and I'm going to tell you a bit more about uh, Leanne in a couple of moments. But first of all, just a bit of housekeeping for you. So with regards to the session, um, please can you make sure that your microphone is muted? Um, I will be muting my microphone once Leanne starts speaking. So apologies if the dog does start barking, um, if somebody comes to the door or anything like that. Um, please can you send us any questions that you may have during the session via the chat function um, we have got a Q&A session today uh, for about 15 minutes um, at the end of the webinar and there are loads of questions that you're going to be able to to ask Leanne um, she's got a wealth of experience over 20 years experience in the uh, accountancy and business sector so um, I'm sure there's lots of questions you can fire at her and please Please make sure that you take some time after the session um, to reflect um, on what you've learned today and to also take some time out as well to have a look at the Simply Ideas um, platform. Uh, so just to quickly introduce myself, um, my name's Dinah Griffiths and I'm a training qualifications partner at Huara Teg. Um, however, I do have a big passion for enterprise and entrepreneurship um, business startup, having been the enterprise and innovation manager at Cardiff and Vale College and also uh, working on a entrepreneurship project for the Welsh Government at the University of South Wales as well. So um, I've had about uh, 15 years experience in the entrepreneurship field um, and it really is my passion. Um, so I'm joined today by Liz Leanne and Leanne um, is currently operations director at Accounted for Limited. However, um, she is an entrepreneur herself. She's a chartered accountant. Um, she's a published author as of today. Um, so one of her recommendations will be uh, to download a book which is Inspirational Women of the World because apparently you can get it for download for 99p on Amazon today. Um, however, I've said that I'm going to buy the hard copy um, because I do like to to have the hard copy. So yes, so she's an author and sure she'll tell you more about that book. Um, she's a finance tutor, she's a SAGE advisory board um, and she's also a business owner with over 20 years experience. Um, so she's going to tell you all about her story um, and then we're going to have time for questions afterwards. And lastly, I'm also joined by Santia and Zantia is going to go through the Simply Do Ideas platform. So this project, Make It Happen, Future Female Founders, um, is being um, organised by Huara Teg and supported by Simply Do Ideas. And it is actually funded by NatWest. Um, and the, one of the reasons why the project is being funded is that traditionally women um, tend to be more reluctant about taking the step um, into entrepreneurship um, because they may not have the confidence that their idea can go forward or they may have issues with regards to um, cash flow or worries with regards to, to cash flow um, or they may um, think that there isn't a market for their product or service um, and what we're here to do is to help um, and support you in terms of taking those ideas forward um, and this week is really appropriate because this week is global entrepreneurship week um, so global entrepreneurship week is happening around the world this week um, and particularly in the UK so there's a number of different um, sessions that you can take part in and get advice and support with regards to taking your business ideas forward. Um, so Zanti is going to be telling you shortly about the Simply Do platform. It is a really easy platform to use. Um, you can explore it using your laptop, your tablet um, or your mobile phone. And it just takes sort of five or six easy steps. You literally sign up. You can explore the site, get started, you know, fill in your business space. Uh, basics and also stay connected um, and Zanti is going to talk you through the whole process at the end 
of the presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Leanne. I'm going to switch my webcam off so you can just uh, concentrate on what Leanne is saying. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. I'm going to okay. mute myself as well. Am I, uh, so this bit is a little bit about me. Um, so really um, grateful to be given the opportunity to speak to everyone today. And hopefully if we can help one or two of you sort of take that action and actually start working for yourselves or achieving some goals that you've got, then that's just fantastic. So the first thing that Dina actually mentioned is that, yes, I am published author, author as of today, which is super exciting. Um, so it's this book here, which is Inspirational Women of the World, where actually we, I got asked along with um, 21 other ladies to write a chapter. And I have just finished reading it and I'm not a crier, but there is some really inspirational and motivational stories in there. So I think anything you're going through, if you actually read through here, I think that hopefully it will show you that you can get through and sort of overcome adversity. So that's definitely worth a 99p download. Um, so definitely do that. Um, that. In that chapter, the chapter I actually did is called The Truth of It, which it does go into a little bit more about me. So you're getting a, a sneak preview of my chapter, really, I suppose, in a way. So about me, um, I never know how to start or what to say on this. So basically, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, left school with GCSEs. My GCSEs were based on my grade, on my um, coursework because I actually had meningitis at the time and had to be hospitalized. So it was always a bit of a, an uphill struggle. Anyway, went on and started working as an accounts assistant and desperately wanted to get qualified and my employer wouldn't actually support that training and I couldn't really afford that training either. So, we moved back to Wales. Wales was fantastic. I managed to find a, a company and a government scheme and able to get some support for my, for my qualifications. And I worked through that while working full time and studying. So I was always told at the time, obviously this is going back a little while ago, but accounts was a very male dominated industry. So it was like breaking through a little bit of a glass ceiling where you're always told that you can't achieve those things and that you're never gonna be a financial controller, you'll only be you know, an assistant, et cetera. So my ambition as young as well and, and a female was to be a financial controller. So I worked my way up to a financial controller for a multi-million pound turnover business. And I just thought like, yes, yeah, this is it. I've made it, this is fantastic. And I hated it. Um, basically every idea I had, everything that I could put forward because the business was making money, it didn't really matter. It, they, you know, there was no action taken. So I felt very much like I was trapped. Um, from there, I went on to actually become an accounts tutor because my college that I was training with doing my chartered accountancy told me that I was a little bit different. So actually they would love for me to tutor some of their um, students. So I started teaching the AAT, which is degree level accounts, um, which was just fantastic. And a lot of people I knew started asking me to do their accounts. So I was helping them and it came to a point where I was working full time and then trying to help everybody and I didn't have enough time left. So I really wanted to start my own business, but part of me, this little bit inside was like, you can't actually do that. You know, what happens if it goes wrong? What are you going to do? You know, you, know, you should have a job, but um, I'm really lucky. I've got a supportive now husband at the time he was my boyfriend and he had just developed a house. And so we had enough money that meant that actually for a few months, we didn't need to worry about paying our mortgage. So I knew a timeline that meant actually I've got an opportunity. So if I use it as long as within this amount of months, if it didn't work, then I'd be able to get another job. And, and at least I would not be able to sit there and say, what if, or have one of those regrets that you really wish you had tried. And so I started working for myself and um, have to be honest, have not looked back since. It's amazing. I love it. And if I can do it, then you can do it. Um, it's just about having that little bit of determination and sort of understanding the goals and things that you actually need to achieve to be able to work for yourself. So depending on which part of your journey in, you know, if you've got an, a 
get my words out if you've got an idea or if you've got something that you know you are the expert in that field that's exactly what you should be doing a business in and don't be afraid to make a mistake or not exactly understand everything about what you're doing that's okay um so yeah i help lots of people um from startup to multi-million pound businesses to exiting their business or selling it for millions um so it doesn't really matter which part of your journey is on hopefully that's something that i can um sort of help you with and happy to go through any questions and things um where am i now so right now i've got a business that's nearly 16 years old we've got just under 20 employees which is brilliant fun i love having a team I've got four children, age 11, 8, 7 and 5, and I have two dogs and I still have family time and business time and we look after nearly 700 clients as well, which is just, you know, it's fantastic and everything at the moment is just, you know, all about sort of pivoting for COVID and growth and, and helping as many people as we can, which is why I got involved in that book in the first place is just that, you know, especially as a female, um, but you you can do this we can achieve the things that you want to achieve and actually actually do there you go dina did you have anything else i should say because i'm quite new at this i don't really know what i'm supposed to say so hopefully that's a little bit about me thank you very much for that leanne so um when you were saying there about work-life balance um how do you work it at the moment so you know are you do you try and work nine to five do you try and juggle it around sort of child care how how does your sort of average week look i um i'm a little bit of a old-fashioned mum so i still do the school run well at the moment actually we're homeschooling all four of our children um however i normally do the school run and all of the pickups I still cook their dinner and home cook food and put them to bed. And I have never missed a school play or a sports day because to me, that's why I've got a family in the first place. I don't think you should have to choose between having your family and having your business. So for me, my kids have come, I say come first, it's a really hard, I don't know if they have all the time, I will you know, be honest, you know, there has been some things where we've had to sort of make a balance or they've come into the office for a meeting and they, they've watched some TV, the lovely electronics, you know, but actually I think there is that balance to, to have. So for me, that's really important. Um, I do not work from nine o'clock till five o'clock. I effectively, you know, I normally do all the school run. I then work and then I'll do the school run again and then I'll cook some tea. And then if I need to, I will work in the evening. That's my choice. Um, for me, that works better. Um, and I'm a bit of a night owl anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. But that's how I've, I've managed to do it because I didn't want to give up on those values as a mother that I think actually I wanted to to be there for those moments um and that's no judgment on anybody that you know has nursery or missed any of those things at all but to me that's just how i wanted to run my business which is you know i've been really fortunate to have the business while having children because actually even though it's hard and it's a bit stressful and sometimes it gets a little bit emotional um especially as you're growing as you're going through things and when it's all on on you um to earn that money and to make sure you've got that money to pay people um, that for me was one of the biggest factors throughout, you know, having four children and, and running the business. That's uh, really important to me. So that's how I manage it. And I do end up with wash mountains, as I call them, because I haven't done a load of washing and all the normal things that every, every female has to juggle all of this stuff and just be amazing all the time. So yeah, I do have a wash mountain and our you know, toys are out all over the place. You stand on Lego in our house. <laughs> Sorry, the, the, believe it or not, the dog just managed to turn on the television. So I don't uh, hope nobody heard that. I think I managed to, to mute it in time. It just stood on the controller because one of my children left it on the floor earlier today. See, real life, exactly. Real life. So I was quickly muting myself and also muting, um, muting the TV at the same time. So we've got some questions coming in. So just bear with me one moment. So, um, Seaned has said, as a, as a single mum and working full time, she struggles financially. Um, do you think it's possible to set up a business when you're not in a stable financial place? 
Yes, I would just do it with caution. So if you've got an idea or something that you're already good at, then maybe start trying to build in something that you can, you know, you can help. So um, I'm not sure what Seanad does. Is there a, does it say, is she able to put that in the chat? Shana, would you be able to pop in the chat what it is that um, you're thinking of doing? What, what do you do? What area? What area? You don't have to tell us specifically if you don't want to, but sort of a, gen a sort of general business area that you're thinking about. Or I can carry on it. So if the, if there's something that she thinks she could do that's maybe not going to cost a huge amount of money but will help people, or things that she can do using the equipment and things that you already have. So I would think about how you can plan it and then I would work it almost backwards. So how I would start for yourself, your resources are going to be your time and your money. Um, and obviously, as a single mum, I can imagine that time being quite a big constraint. So be sort of honest with yourself, you know, after children or child's gone to bed at eight o'clock, have you got an hour or two hours that you could work on something that might not cost very much money, but it's going to take up some more time? and allocate those times and, and work on the business that way. The other thing I would do is look at it almost the wrong way around. So I would look at what your bills are at the moment and what you know you need to earn. So at the moment, obviously, so you're working full time, so you know what your income is or you know what it needs to be. And then set up your business plan to say, right, this is how much I need my income to be. So if you're selling something or if you're doing something that's a low value and you need to have a big quantity, or is it just you need you know, one or two people to work with you to earn that money per month? And then set that as your goal. Once you know that's your goal and you know how much time, it will start to feel a little bit better. It will be hard. But when you get that balance and you get to that point, at that point, you would possibly be able to make the decision to maybe ask your full time job to go part time. You know, and then you can get some time back that way. So I would assess kind of yeah what you're doing, how you want to do it and then be quite regimented and planned with it. But go for it. You can do this. Okay. So the sector that she's um, looking at is wedding planning and events um, organising. Okay, so at the moment, that industry is obviously slightly affected with COVID. So what I'd probably say is look at Facebook groups, look at online events that you can get involved in or um, places where people will be. And a lot of that won't cost you money. It's going to be the time that you can put in to actually start to attract an audience, set up a Facebook group, you know, give away some top tips. Um, you start to kind of get involved in that industry and try to push something and then you can start to sell things and then you might know what actually you want to do or make a planner on, on Word and give it away on PDF and give it away in a Facebook group and ask, you know, are you thinking of getting married next year? Here's your planner, you know, have it on me. This is great. And that will actually just attract lots of people in and then that might be something that then you can move one step forward and be like okay i've given you a planner but now actually let me help you plan your big day it's going to cost x amount but these are all the things i can do this is the package i've got um a lot of that won't cost very much so it's going to be time it's also getting a portfolio of service providers as Absolutely. well isn't it and you know in terms of the venues that you'll potentially use the the cost that they'll charge um, you know the photographers the wedding favors the decor yeah. depending on which sector but having those contacts in place getting those contacts working with other businesses or putting your plans together and your package together that's that's what I would probably focus on right now for you and then it will if it starts to snowball and it starts to grow you will know then financially when you can make that switch over to okay I'm employed I want to be self-employed because there's, there's quite a, a lot of work at the moment as well with regards to, you know, providing the services online um, as well. Yeah, there's lots of opportunities at the moment for online um, businesses and new startups. And it's amazing. I've seen sort of quite a few requests for people that um, are asking for planners to be able to do things for them because, you know, either they're isolated or they're having to isolate. So they're having to get somebody else to do a lot of the legwork for them. Yeah. But then also numbers just... are restricted. Exactly. And that's the, so you need to sort of either tap into the, you know, the, the sort of brides or tap into the locations. Maybe those brides will be going to look at. Um, depending on what exact service you're going to you know, offer or give um, or even getting in contact with, you know, people that are making the wedding cakes or the photographers or you know, and you can build a network, which, like I say, is, is not really the 
cost then it's the time so if you've if you've put those you know, two hours or something aside in the end of each evening and you're going to sort of have a look on Facebook on LinkedIn on Twitter and, and gather some momentum that's probably where I would would go with that one it's also you know rather than face-to-face uh, -face events it's those sort of creative online events so um, I've done online art classes um, there's online cocktail making there's online cookery um, I've done an online wellness day so there's lots of opportunities in terms of online events as well so potentially that's a market that you could look at because you haven't got that financial outlay uh, or as much financial outlay if you're doing events online. Absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, that develops, Sean Ed. So you need to keep yeah, us posted. Yeah, let me know. Keep us yeah, <laughs> keep us posted on that one. Tag me in on Facebook, and I'll have a little look at what you're doing. Um, we've also got the question as well. Um, somebody's got a sort of a initial idea what steps would you take if you've got that first sort of initial business idea what steps would you take in terms of taking it forward um i would potentially sort of make sure you've got a market there so if you've got an idea that's fantastic um and as you've already said there dina you know an online um thing at the moment would be immensely popular or at least the ability to have a kind of a, a two-tongue approach um but i would test the market a little bit see if there's actually something on there and then just start to build it build it slowly. Um, obviously, if you're fortunate enough to be in a position where you can just be like, you know, what, I can just concentrate on this full time, I've got nothing else to do. That's amazing. Um, I would have been, you know, immensely happy with that at the very beginning. But I think it's just making sure that you know, you've got your idea, you know how you can do it, you know how much that's going to cost, you know how much time it's roughly going to take you, you know your kind of step. So one of the things that we've always found with um, the business owners that we work with is you want to say, right, Okay, so Leanne, she wants to own an accounts practice. Um, I want to have 20 people. That's that's a really hard goal to have in your head from the very beginning. And it's like, how do I do that? Where do I where do I start? What do I do? So I think actually by setting yourself little milestones and little goals along the way, that will help you achieve it. So the first thing you need to do is you need a client. You know, you need to know the services you're going to offer, and you need to know the client you're going you, that you're aiming for, and then it's attracting that client. It's understanding what you're doing and making sure you can actually give a really good service. Because for ourselves, we have grown organically, so we haven't really done paid advertising or marketing, which in our industry is a little bit unheard of. You know, we haven't bought a practice; it's literally just been organic growth. But we've grown because of word of mouth. That's because we've done an amazing service, and then they've told their friend, and then they've told so and so. And actually, that's worked amazingly for us. Um, so I think it's just making sure that whatever you do, you know, do it to the best of your ability and, and give it your all. Um, so I think, yeah, I would just plan each stage and then make sure that actually, yep, okay, I've achieved that, so now I can do this. Or I've made that £100, so now I'm going to go and actually I know I want to spend that £100 on whatever it may be that you need in your business. Um, so yeah, small goals and be just planned and methodical and think about it. So w one of the questions we always have is, you know, when do I know I can actually go self-employed when I'm you know, working at the moment or an employee? I would always say about that is that that's your finances. So you need to know how much money you need each month inside your personal your account to run your house and, and keep your bills covered um, and then that's your target for your business so then you know that when it gets to x amount of month that you're earning that you would be able to afford to pay yourself then you could make a switch and, and do it quite comfortably um, obviously it is it's scary I'm not going to lie it's scary going from having a paycheck every month to we may or may not or what's going to happen or what if I upset that person that I'm working for or what if I don't deliver what I've said I'm going to deliver I think that's your self-confidence you know you can do it or you wouldn't even be thinking about having a business in the first place um the one thing I would say out of everything that I've learned is that I don't think you have to do everything on your own because that's that one piece of information is probably what took me the longest to actually learn um, I always thought I had to do everything and you really don't. It's about having the support network and people around you that can help you with those questions and those queries. I don't know thank if I've you. answered the questions or just gone off on one. So sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really good. Thank you. Um, we've got a question, actually. You mentioned during your um, um, during the session that obviously accounting um, is an, a male dominated 
field um, and we've got a question with regards to that so I'm just going to uh, pull it out um, bear with me so I can read it all there we are so um, hello there I'm thinking of setting up my own company within the next year or so i've been volunteering in the business uh, in the building trade and i've gained my safety certificates cscs card to work on building sites etc um, this is a male orientated trade and although i've contacts can you offer any advice or tips with regards to how to overcome these challenges um, so you're going to go through probably the same sort of thing that I went through, which is how, you know, the typical accountant thing used to be, you know, sort of older gentlemen, dusty books and, you know, not a younger lady. So I got lots of comments, um, sometimes were hurtful comments, actually. I don't think they were ever really meant in that way, but it was a little bit sexist. Times have moved on a little bit, so I hope you don't get that as much as what I had. I think you almost have to embrace it and use it to your advantage, um, which I know sounds bizarre, but don't get offended by it. It doesn't matter. And actually that makes you different. So let it help you stand out in what you're doing. Look at me, I'm amazing. I can do all of this inside this male dominated environment and do it better than you. And I think then use that, just use it to your advantage. You will stand out anyway because of the industry that you're in and because it is male dominated, but it's, about finding the people that will help you along your path rather than the people that are going to try and hold you down. So obviously, you know, don't like how I've always done things is I've tried to be quite humble. Um, for me, it's just been about my journey and where I'm going and I don't believe in putting anybody else down and that's not how I would, how I would do it. I don't run my business like that. I'm, you know, want to empower people and motivate people. And that's just how I've always been. So if somebody's being a, an ass to me, then, um, you know, I, what I would have done or what I did do is that, you know, okay, well, that's your opinion and thanks very much, but can you help with this or can, you know, can we do this, this and this and have those ideas and don't be afraid to say it anyway. You might get bashed down a little bit, but I think just really try to keep pushing forward. And in regards to kind of if you're trying to set up on your own as well, you will find in the construction industry, depending on what you're doing and what you're going to be going for is there's a lot of, um, you know, females that might, for example, need something done on their house. They might possibly feel more comfortable knowing that that's actually got a female influence in there than actually having a you know a man just coming into your house to do something on you know a, a building. So I think you will have a market, and how you then market your industry and how you promote yourself could make a big difference. Um, I'm a I'm a single mum, and I moved into a renovation project in um, February, believe it or not, just before lockdown. Um, so I survived the whole of lockdown with no kitchen, no bathroom. Oh my because goodness! It was going to be it was going to be really easy. <laughs> <laughs> all, I had to do, all I had to do was pop down to the leisure centre to have a shower with the kids and this, that, and the next thing. And then yes, so we. Um, I left the cast iron bath in the bathroom. So we had a cast iron bath and then some hose, those stick on hose pipe things from Argos. And um, yes, that was where we washed up, washed the kids, did, oh, did everything you. pretty much. And what I have found in the last few months is that you can contract, uh, contact tradespeople. You will get a rough estimate on price etc and then unfortunately when they come out to sort of do an official quote for the work it seems that because you're a single parent um, or a woman that suddenly the price doubles and or they knock on the door and they they ask for the man of the house and it it, it really is quite interesting the experiences I've had and then um I've had a couple of bad experiences. So, for example, the person that was meant to fix the roof hasn't actually fixed the roof and has sort of refused to come back and things like that. So I think there is a real gap in them. Well, there is um, female sort of tilers and plumbers and, and builders, but they're really, really busy and they're really difficult to get because they're so busy. In, in Sorry, I was just going to... Sorry, I got all excited then. But in our... Um in my experience obviously we deal with those trade accounts and 
they're doing amazingly well at the moment. There's definitely a market because people are spending their money on their houses and things like that. But um, it's about the organization. Now, if you're, a, if you're able to organize yourself and know that this is my diary, this is my plan, you could right now grow a very large business off the back of those, that, that industry completely. So, I, you know, I think there's a big market as well for trust, um, you know, and marketing yourself as being sort of trustworthy and, and things like that. And what I found as well is, you know, I've asked, you know, various sort of handymen and tradespeople for sort of a day rate to come in. And I can just say, you know, can you um, do some boxing in there? Can you um you know put three doors up can you you know lots of little things and do it as a day rate and um, most people won't do a day rate they'll do a, a fixed price job rate um, as well so I think there's certain aspects of the market that currently aren't being tapped into um, and I think as a organized female I think that there is um, a lot of a gap in the market for it because what I found as well is that um, the tradespeople will come in and they'll they'll do a bit here and then they'll go away because they've got about 10 other clients. They'll come in and they'll do a bit and then they'll come back in a couple of days and do a bit more and then they'll come back in a couple of days and do a bit more. And you just kind of want a job finished. Oh yeah, so, there's, uh, definitely a, there's definitely a gap in the market. So, um, so Natalie, tell us what you do. I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, <laughs> and I'm quite excited as well, because uh, if I see you advertising your services, then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> there go then your I, first I, customer there, look, right here. You found her already. I've got, <laughs> uh, I've got loads to do. I've got loads to do. She's actually an estate agent at the moment. So, um, yeah, so I think setting up a, a sort of a building company, you know, that is organised sort of, you know does the prices when they say they're going to um you know i think I, you know i had one gentleman come round to quote for plastering three times um because he, he came round he quoted and then sort of covid happened and then he says oh, i'll come and quote again um and then i rang him about a week or so later and he was like oh, i need to double check on a few things so he came to the house three times and i never ever got a quote from him so he wasted his time and he wasted my time and some of that might be about the system that's actually in place so we do need to be organized but it's also about just remembering to follow up on those things so if you've got a lead and then you do nothing with it like that example there then that's just it's just a waste you know we need to get to the point where actually we know that we've spoken to dina we know that we've done these measurements now i need to send back you know this quote this price and then actually when can i do the work as well so is that is that follow through that system and if you've got time and you're planning to set up a business have a little think about all the steps that a customer would have to go through um to get to the point where actually you're making money from them so those are the, those are the kind of areas that i would yeah, concentrate in that example that's a really good question um, and the other thing I would do as well, I'm, I'm giving away a business idea now, is to have all the trades, like have the trades available. So, you know, you've got a plumber, you've got a carpenter, you've got, um, you know, a brickie, you've got a roofer, so that you can offer a package um, so that the client doesn't have to go to, you know, all the separate people and get different quotes for things that, you know, you can just say, right, I've got a reliable tiler, I've got a reliable you know um carpenter to do your doors i've got a reliable person to do xyz um, and be able to offer a package so um you make it easier for the client yeah there you go there's there's an idea as well but you Business probably know that not. already being an estate agent <laughs> um we've got another question um with regards to um they don't know what business to set up so they want to work for themselves to have more flexibility and they're just wondering um what are the sort of the growth sectors at the moment you know what are the sectors that are doing well at the moment um we've actually got a lot of industries that are doing well at the moment um so anything online sales um is doing fantastic it's just about being in the right place and obviously promoting something so if you've got something you can take a picture of um, so like the book, for example, that's something that's easy to photograph. You've got a picture of it so you can promote it. Sometimes if you use Facebook ads, what we found with our clients is the more that you pay in Facebook ads, the more you will earn. And there's a direct, you know, a, a comparable kind of chart that can be plotted from it. Um, 
The other thing that's doing amazingly well is takeaway food. Um, that's kind of boomed. Um, and like you've already touched on some of them, you know, the smaller sectors that we've got that are doing amazingly well are like the online thing. So, for example, we've had a photographer. Photography industry wasn't great. So what they've actually done is they did an online photography course that went amazingly well. Um, and it was just about having a certain number of people because he knew how much money he needed to make. So he knew where he was targeting and, and where he was going. So for that one, for example, he actually aimed at children. Um, but obviously he was targeting the parents, you know, this was, if you go back to when we were locked down. So obviously what he was looking at was, you know, I've got all these kids at home. There's going to be a price point where a parent will pay X amount of pounds for a child to have a course for an hour for, you know, for maybe two or three weeks and actually learn something about photography. Those kind of things, thinking a little bit outside of the box, are things that are going really well at the moment, especially where people are still a little bit sort of, I don't want to say scared, that's not the right word, but it's still very conscious of COVID. You know, people are still being a little bit wary about things. And a lot of businesses that are larger that haven't been able to pivot their business have you know, there is a gap, they are struggling. So there is a, an opportunity right now for you to sort of come in and do a business on pretty much anything you want to. What I would probably concentrate on is something that you're good at, something you've got passion about, because then you will enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, then no one's going to enjoy listening to you because actually it, it won't, you know, it, it won't go anywhere because it's just going to be one of those things, oh, I can't believe I've got to do that today. That's not what you want to set up a business in if you want to have some flexibility. You need to still enjoy and have that passion and enthusiasm about what you're actually doing. So think about what you can do and then think about how maybe you could make it online or look at your resources that you've got available and see what, how then you could, could grow it or use it to make it so that it's, you know, you're self-employed rather than um, yeah, employed. I've got another question. So looking back on your startup journey and with hindsight, um, would you change anything? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, that's a mean one. <laughs> um, I have to be honest, no. Um, I don't think I would change anything because I think sometimes you have to go through those experiences to become like where you are now and what you've learned. The only thing I would say, which I said at the beginning is, you know, you're not on your own. Sometimes when you're running your own business, it's really lonely and nobody tells you that. Nobody makes you aware of the fact that, yeah, because if you're self-employed and you work on your own, then if you've got a question about money or about, you know, what should you do? Do you need to take on employee or don't you? Or should I take on this client or I need to worry about this safeguarding or anything like that? You, you've got all these questions and you've got nobody to actually talk to about it. So don't get me wrong. Some people are really lucky and they've got, you know, their partners or they've got parents or they've got a friend that they can talk to. But all the way along my journey, the one thing I can promise you is it has felt a little bit lonely. So if you've got, you know, I think when you start growing your business, the, the things that I kind of learn is that, you know, it's hard to talk to somebody else about the money side and about the finances or about a decision that you're going to make, you know, whether it is taking on employees, because sometimes there's a little bit of judgment. Sometimes there's a little bit of jealousy. They don't really understand everything you're having to think about. So it's all very well and good saying that, oh, I can't believe you haven't got any time anymore. But then taking on that employee means that you haven't got as much money. So where do you make that decision? I think that's probably the one thing is make sure you're not actually doing this on your own. You need to build a support network around you. And that could be joining a, you know, a business owner's Facebook group. It could be um, making sure you've got the right accountant or you know, it could be making sure you've got like a business advisor. There's lots of help like Quirateg are awesome with their um, courses and things that you can kind of understand and learn. But I think that's the one thing that I found quite hard is that I always kind of try to do everything myself to start with and go through that. So that's that's probably my biggest takeaway is it don't try to do it on your own because it is it's lonely anyway, even when you've got a support network, because there will be some things where you just, you know, it goes on and on in your head like a replay. Um, so, yeah, that's my biggest takeaway, probably. Thank you for that. Um, I, I always ask this. This is one of my questions. Um, have you made a, well, I've got a couple, actually. Have you made a mistake that you've just thought, oh, my goodness, that's sort of a, a laughable mistake in hindsight? Um, being an accountant, I'm quite planned. So there's 
don't get me wrong, there has been mistakes across the thing. So the most recent one I did is I was adamant that because now I don't have to have a Sage download because we've, we've been online and on the cloud for ages, um, I wanted an iPad because everyone else had an iPad Pro and I want to have an Apple product and I want an Apple computer. Um, that's the biggest mistake. That's one that I should never have done. Don't just want it. I just wanted it because it was Apple and because, you know, oh, everyone else has done it. That's not, um, don't, don't make that mistake because I actually hated it and yeah, ended up selling it and buying myself a, a normal laptop. So, you know, um, I think, you know, business wise, I think, I don't know. I have, I, there's not something I think is a laughable regret. I think the only thing that's now looking back is quite funny is that because we were tight on the finances and, and we did everything ourselves, um, you know, we, how I grew the business is I, I didn't get finances. We weren't, you know, we weren't kind of borrowing anything. Um, so the business was made in my house. So when I actually found out I was pregnant with my first child, I kid you not, the only bit of my house I had left was actually my bedroom. The rest of my house had been turned into offices and a meeting room and a storeroom for paperwork for clients. And I literally had a bed left in my house. That was it. Um, and then finding out you're pregnant, and you need to buy a sofa and you need to change it all and get an office. That's probably the biggest um, yeah, laugh that I've had in in there because yeah, we found out when I, I was pregnant quite late on. So I was already sort of five, six months pregnant before I found out. And uh, yeah, that, that happened quite quickly. So that was quite funny. So maybe just a balance with between home and, and work is probably the bit that I let creep um, much further than I probably should have. And yeah, that was when I realized I had done it. <laughs> my, uh, my cousin found out she was pregnant with twins at six months. So uh, that was a bit of a shock. Yes. Wow. I feel for her. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky I only had one in there. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have had to have given up two rooms eventually. No. <laughs> um, and then this is another curious question. Um, and it was a question that came up on Tuesday when we were talking about company values and, and ethics. Have you ever had any clients that you, for any reason, whether financial or um, morally, that you've thought, I can't work with these people? Yes, um, only a few. Um, we've had a few instances. Obviously, we working with money, um, we see people on their best days and their worst days. And sometimes emotions do get the better of you. you know, whether you've turned over your first bit of income and you're able to make that jump to self-employed or whether you have got literally no money left and everyone is chasing you for, for it. it, it's emotional. So we do end up sometimes being the kind of the sounding board for some of those emotions and they do come out on us. And we get that. We accept that to an extent. Um, there's only a couple of times where I haven't accepted that one where we had a client that actually came into our office and um, actually got a little bit up close and personal with one of my team. Um, he was removed from the premises and we refused point blank to work with him ever again and gave him all of his books back. Um, and that was an instant, that was probably a reaction, but that was a reaction that would never change. That would happen now. If, if that happened to any of my team right now, we would have the same reaction. Um, you know, once in, in 15 years, by the way, it was just, yeah, we don't have that normally. Um, <laughs> I think the only other time actually that I've really stood up to a client was when we first started in business, we had a client come in and wanted to work with us and it would have been a really large, well, it was, is a really large client. And we had a little bit of an issue because he, he wanted to speak to my husband all the time, not me. And it was sort of, I felt like I was not able to work with him. And it just came out of me without any plans, which is, it's not good. Make sure you plan things first. But I had a conversation with him. was like, if you do not work like working with a female that you're going to have to tell your finances to, then there is no point you being one of our clients. You need to go and find a different accountant. Um, and I have to be honest, my husband was like, oh my goodness, do you know how much that client, like, you, what are you doing? And um, I just don't think you should work with people if you have got, like if you do not feel comfortable and you don't think it's going to work long term, if you know, like for, for me, for example, I need to understand what people's go goals are, what finances are going on and that they're honest with me about their, their bank accounts and their actual transactions. I didn't feel that from this client and he made it perfectly clear that he was not happy working with a female. So that came out as a comment, literally just told him to 
basically either ship out or shape up. And we still work with him now, actually. He's awesome, but he just needed to be told. Um, and yeah, that's probably the, uh, the oh, yeah, they're probably the two. We, we, we normally work with lovely clients and have lovely, lovely people to work with us. So we don't have it very much. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of an open um, relationship when it comes to your money, because some people are really, it's something that we've always been told, isn't it? That you don't, you don't brag about it. You don't boast about it. It's not something you really talk about how much money you earn. Actually, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed in how much money you're earning or how much money you need to earn. And actually, that is something we should be talking about because it needs to be addressed and you need someone to talk to about it. So I think you have to have that open, honest relationship, at least with your accountant, um, when it does come to all your finances. Thank you for that. It's just another nosy question um, because okay. it's quite interesting in terms of, you know, whether you look at your, you know, you as it's starting out in business, whether you go after every opportunity, you know, or you pick and choose the opportunities that best fit with you and will fit with your sort of morals and 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 the ethos of the brand that you want to develop as well. So I think it's um, it's something quite important to do and it to is. decide Absolutely. on it, to decide yeah. on it those early stages. Yeah, you'll make the mistakes. You'll take on a client or a customer that you think, oh, do I really want to? Oh, yeah, I need it because of the money or whatever you're driving, or you want to have the portfolio pictures, and you will you will do that. There will be some people you work with that are like oh, I can't believe I'm having to work with them, um, but that's you know that's that's okay. I think that's part of of business. You know, we've been going for a long time now, and for us, we we have the right clientele come in because actually the people that are recommending are already kind of nice people, so they normally have nice people they're hanging around with, and um, yeah, the referrals that we get, we've we've genuinely got some absolutely lovely clients. Well, thank you very much for that. We're sort of coming to the end um, of the session today. Um, I'm going to hand you over now to um, Zantia, who is going to tell you all about the Simply Do Ideas platform. So just bear with me just for one second while I make, um, make the presenter. Are you there, Zantia? Yeah, just uh, sorting it out now. Brilliant. Thank you. And I'll come back to you in a second, Leanne, just for the end. That's great. So now everyone should be able to see my screen. Just to let you know, my name is Shantia Salamanca and I'm the Innovation Analyst at Simply Do Ideas. Just um, want to say quickly before we start, that was a great um, talk and I really enjoyed it and some great points were made. So um, I hope everyone else enjoyed it just as much as I did. Um, as Diana mentioned, this is a collaborative effort between Simply Do Ideas Quartag and NatWest and um, it's about being able to get your idea and making it happen and hopefully turning it into a business. Now there is a platform available to everybody if you want to go on it it is the link sdi.click forward slash make it happen just put that in the URL and it will send you straight to the page that you can see right now on your screens. Um, most of this has already been mentioned today, so I'll just skip over this section. But if you click on the button that says create your idea, it will take you to a sort of registration page. It's a really quick one. I'll just do an email address. It takes you through. It's, it takes no time at all. And it's quick and easy. And lastly, a password. Right. So now that we're registered, it will take you back to that same page. Click on create your idea. And what it is, is a six step process that will sort of structure, help structure your idea into a business and things that you probably should consider while you're in those early stages. Um, and, and points actually that were made today, things like your market, your customers, um, maybe even your competitors. As you can see, on the left hand side, the six points that um, I was just talking about is the concept, customers, competitors, compatibility, contents and cash. And then there's a little section about yourself. So if we just go through each section, just so that you can see how quick and easy it is to fill out. The first section is the concept. So here, what is your idea? It can be as little as one sentence. So um, for the lady that wanted to start the construction, going into construction or trades, you can just write it in here maybe some keywords um, any images that you want to add. You can either choose one from your own device that can be, as mentioned before, a mobile 
a laptop or even an, an iPad, you can just choose it for your own device, as you can see. Or there is an a unsplash section here, which say, for example, you want to do an image because you want to start a vet or go into a doggy business. You just have to select dog and there is a whole host of library images that you can use. The next section is the customers. Now, these are the people that you will be looking to sell either product or services to. So it's essentially finding if there is a potential market out there and what that size of the market is that you want to be going into. And to make it a bit easier, you can also choose to create what are called sort of customer profiles to give a face to the customers that you may be selling these products or services to. And then at the bottom, just a little section of how you might market it. And as mentioned before, at the moment, everything is digital, it is online. So marketing something digital is the way to go at the moment. Um, the next section will be your competitors. So what's already out there? And what are they currently doing? Is there anything that you can do differently? What sets you apart to your competitors? And that's just that section here. Again, you just fill out the name just to give you something to physically see. You're putting your idea down on paper as opposed to keeping it in your head. And then the next section is just compatibility. Now, this section is just sort of a slider. There are one, two, three, four, five different things. So, for example, here you might have a really strong network. So, say you'll want to go into and set up on your own from a business that you were already doing, a career that you already know about. You probably already have lots of connections that you have made while working for another company. You probably see have a strong network of family and friends that can help you. So that might be a nine. However, maybe as you're in the early stages of planning, that might only be a two, and then you can maybe justify your reasons just so that you can see what it is that you may need to work on moving forward. And then next would be sort of like the contents. What are the essential things that you are going to need to make your idea happen and turn into a business? Now, you can just click certain things on these already created dashboards. So here we may have social media, we may have um, staff or admin, like it might be just yourself to begin with. So you might just want to put your own name there. And you can just say what is needed and who is needed to make your business happen. The next stage is cash. So it's important to understand that you'll be needing money coming in as there will be money going out. So it's just maybe make a bullet list of things that you may want to consider when setting up your business. And then last but not least, there's a little about you section just to um, help us then, because once you submit your idea and um, you do decide to consent to share it. We are in partnership with some really great and fantastic expert business support that is already out there. And they have agreed to come on and partner and, and support you in your journey of starting up your business. And they'll be in contact with you three to five days once you have submitted your idea. And then they'll do sort of like a one on one support with you just to get you going. Now, I think that's everything, but if you do get stuck at any point on the platform, there is always someone on board and someone that can help. And at the bottom right, you can see there's a little bubble by here, a blue one with sort of like a, a text message. If you just click on that, then you can send us a message at any time and you will receive an answer or help to any query that you have within a few minutes. And as far as I know, I think that's everything from me. So I'll just pass over back to Dinah. Thank you very much for that, Shantia. Um, so I'm just posting a link at the moment um, into the chat function. So we've had three sessions this week. Um, we have had um, Jess Morgan from um, Tiny Wizard Studios and in the chat function I've just posted a link to her um, video. So if anybody was would like to go and view that um, I'll also um, post as well 
the link to um, Althea yesterday and then later on today um, Leanne's session will be available to view on our YouTube channel as well so if anybody would like um, to view that. Um, so without further ado I would just like to say a massive thank you um, to Leanne for being our uh, female entrepreneur today who has shared her journey with us and also some fantastic advice as well so thank you very much for that um, I just want to say good luck with the book as well so uh, I'll be going on Amazon in a couple of moments to uh, to buy my hard copy I should say rather than download the the download the version but it is available for 99p today um, it is. But if, any, <laughs> if anybody would like to get in touch with um, the team then please do contact um, Huarateg um, or simply do um, with regards to taking your ideas forward and also as well have a look out for other activities that are taking place this week with regards to Global Entrepreneurship Week. So thank you very much everybody and um, look forward to seeing you online again uh, for future sessions that we will have for the female entrepreneurs in Wales. Thank you very much everybody. Have Take a good care. day.